the most significant event which occurred was my father was determined to get his business back, but things were sort of at bottom dead center. You know that thing was in the Russian zone, and actually they lived in the Russian zone too, which was which was no which was not a problem per se, but legally they, he had sold the business. He had been able to establish that the 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 guy who took it away from him never lived to enjoy the fruits of his plunder, because the odd thing was. Because. Because as soon as the war broke out, he and all the, his workers were drafted, and they, it was clo the the place had been was closed down throughout the war and after the war, and this man was now in prison as a Nazi, as a sort of the Austrians were going through the motions of punishing the uh, their Nazi citizens, going through the motions literally, it was not a very serious attempt. <clears throat> Now my, but of course he he was waiting for trial and he was and my father said well will why perhaps you can help me to see this man and we'll see what we can do with him so I you know by that time I was very young and very arrogant and uh, I said sure no problem so I I, I didn't say that but it, right that <laughs> wasn't the expression right? figuratively speaking I said it. Uh, I put on my best uniform and my gun and all this stuff, and I marched up to the to the prison, which was a combination of jail and courthouse, the central courthouse in Vienna, actually. And I demanded to see this prisoner. And they, of course, they, I mean, they, they, in those days, they were still very afraid, and they said, oh, yes, yes, but we can't give the authority. The only person who can give the authority is the judge who's presiding over his case. And I said, where's the judge who's presiding? Well, he's in court. Where's the court? So I, anyway. Cut a long story short. I mean, as I said, I, mean, I, I couldn't do this today, but then there was, I was arrogant. I marched into this courtroom, interrupted the proceedings, asked the su judge to sign this piece of paper in German. Although my German was sort of a rock, bit rocky at the time, I had hardly spoken it during eight years, very little actually. He signed the release for, for us to interview this prisoner. My father and I went into this. Uh, this uh, visiting room where the man expressed great joy that he was still alive and how, what could he do. And my father said, well, we'd like to buy the business back from you. And he said, oh, yes, 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 my help, my case. And my father said, and we'll pay you what you paid us. And he said, oh, yes. So he just, you know, he didn't pull out the cash because the man wasn't allowed cash, but we'd signed the agreement that for the same amount of, for the same sum, pitiful sum, uh, which he had paid, which he had paid in 1939, 38. In 1947, we bought he bought the business back, and that was the end of that. And my, and my, and very shortly thereafter, my we, my father obtained the keys, and he went in there, and he found the he found raw materials which he had bought in 38 and 37 and 38. Lumber which had cured yeah, beautifully, <laughs> yes, it had been sitting there, and all the machinery, while dusty and probably a little rusty, was there. And and the people who had worked for him had all come out of prison camps, you know, in various American camps, not Russian camps, that took years, but uh, they had all been taken prisoner in the West. They had come back, and they all went back to work. And I won't say lived happily ever after, but uh, Almost. That's 